just very individual. I think it's one of those medias where you can really just sort of express your own views and your own opinions. Can I have a taste of your ice cream? Can I lick the crumbs from your table? Can I interfere in your crisis? No, mind your own business. are uh, mini self-published magazines um, that people can make themselves out of anything. Uh, literally just take a sheet of paper and fold it in half. I think that's what's so nice about them. Like They can be about anything. You can just do solely photo zines, solely written ones, a mixture of both. It can be anything, anything you want. Um, and there'll always be an audience to sort of see it, I think, which I really love. A zine is literally just a format that is almost like a booklet, um, has multiple pages, and inside it can be whatever the hell you want. I consider zines to be any kind of folded piece of paper that can express a point or view. Um, a lot of the time they are made in uh, like punk scenes or riot girl scenes, but they can really be about anything and, you know, about Star Wars or your favourite book or your favourite actor or your favourite band um, or about, you know, how you're feeling, which is about what I make my zines about. Hello, my name is Scarlett Hall and I create MASH. MASH is a zine which I've been doing for two years now um, and it aims to explore new music while remembering the old, um, to desensitise the topic of the birds and the bees and to bring the cut and stick feel back to print publications. I'm Ruby, I am an oil painter and a librarian but I also make uh, a zine called Paraphernalia. Hi, I'm Hayes, I use any pronouns, and I make Too Much Heart Zine, uh, which you can see here, issue 3, issue 2, issue 1. Hi, I'm Annabelle Lee Dean, and I am a zinester, illustrator, musician, writer, and creative of all kinds, I'm generally an artist. The first known zine created can be traced all the way back to the 1930s. <laughs> It was created by the Science Correspondence Club in Chicago and was called The Comet. This started a long-lasting trend of sci-fi related zines being created. However, it was in the 40s when science fiction vanzine culture really boomed. A lot of authors at this time started creating zines and this was the time the term fanzine was created by someone called Russ Chauvenet. The 1940s was also the time the world saw the first queer zine. This was from a woman named Edith Ede. She was also known as Lisa Ben, an anagram of lesbian. Edith Ede wrote nine issues of Vice Versa and distributed it locally in Los Angeles. However, it was the 70s which saw zines explode. Yeah, you look so bloody boring, I cannot believe it. Due to copy shops being easily accessed by anyone, zinesters were able to make their zines cheaply and quickly. With this, the look of zines also changed forever. They took on a grungy, dark, do-it-yourself look. The punk scene became the main centre of zine culture, mainly in Los Angeles, London and New York. The most popular zines of this time were Slash, Snuff and Glue and Punk. Riot Girl, an underground feminist punk movement that came around in the 90s. It became an angry response to sexism in the punk scene for women. Political zines were being created that spread 
the feminist manifesto to people all around the world. These became an output for silenced voices that felt they couldn't have a voice at that time. Creating zines empowered women to speak out against men's violence, gender role and expectations, also inspiring them to share their personal experiences with body image and sexuality. I believe in most Riot Girl um, ideals and thoughts and uh, messages. Um, I do, however, love the spelling and I like to hone in on that of girl because Riot Girl is spelled G R R R L. So it doesn't always have to relate to femininity, but it does relate to people with vaginas who are have prejudice against them because they're considered female. But I love that word specifically because it's inclusive to the evolution of gender today. However, with Riot Girl, I know that a lot of punk history generally is a little bit exclusive to white people. There were so many zines being produced around this time. Erica Reinstein and May Summer founded Riot Girl Press to serve as a distribution framework which helped zinesters get their work out there. Popular Riot Girl zines included Bust, Shocking Pink, Bitch Magazine and Rock Girl. I don't think anything else gives me the amount of freedom and the amount of space to just talk about anything I want really. Especially doing a print publication, I just love that it's just one little book and it is filled with so much, so many opinions, so many themes, so, so many things. Most art forms are good art forms. It's quite hard to have a bad one. Uh, zines are an amazing art form. I think they're incredible um, just because they, anyone can make them and they can be about anything and they're so versatile because you can have collages or photos or writing, prose, poetry, diary entries, um, interviews in them. You can have whatever you want in them, and I think that's so incredible. But, and they're this kind of snapshot of what who you were and what you were thinking at the time. Like, this is how I was feeling in early 2021, and it's really incredible. My mission when I was making zines is to express my own thoughts and experiences. I express a lot of things through zines. Um, I think with zines, they're a good place to kind of share um, individual thoughts that build up to a conversation. They, they, because you have the uh, pages and then it forms a book, it's kind of like you have these individual thoughts that on their own might not be particularly impactful, but if you're flipping through and you're reading a lot, you build up a bigger picture of like a political idea or just a mindset. fucking love the zine community. Everyone is so nice. I remember when I was first trading um, my first issue of my zine, uh, I was like DMing people and I was so scared to do it because I, you know, I was looking at these people with their huge zines and I was like, how am I ever going to be as good as they are? Um, but I DM people and it was like, hey, do you want to trade? Because I really like, I love, I love how your zine looks. And they were like, oh my gosh, your zine looks so cool. I, of course I want to trade. And then, you know, we DM each other after we read each other's zines and be like, oh my God, it was so good. And I screenshot every um, time someone like posts my zine on their story talking about it. Because then I just save it to look at it afterwards because it really just makes me so happy. Um, that other people have seen my work and enjoyed it and it's helped them. If it could be completely sustainable, I would love for more print. Maybe we could recycle our zines and make new ones with our old zines and things like that. That'd be cool. I don't know. I would just love to see more print in the future zines. That, like with most things nowadays, 
uh, but they might become kind of consumerized, more corporate. Um, I think the thing that's like quite beautiful about them is that they are amateur. I always say, you know, they are amateur magazines. And I think that the way that like, we have social media and the way that we share things now, it means that people are kind of like constantly upping their standards, um, which is good in terms of like if it's upping their standards of communication and um, upping their design, but it's not necessarily good in terms of if their idea of upping standards is to become closer to producing a product that a company could produce, um, which I think we often idealise as being the perfect product is like if it's made by a big company, but that's not the case, it's just we've been taught to think that because of capitalism. Definitely would recommend. Make a zine and come join us. <laughs>